What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton here at Datadash and today is August 22nd of 2022. Well folks, I hope you all are having a fantastic day wherever you are because in today's video we've got another exciting Macro Monday here on the channel. We've got a lot to discuss here as not only equity futures are starting to turn over here signaling a further decline in the cards, but outside of that as well, Bitcoin, Ethereum and the broader crypto market in absolute turmoil after last Friday and Saturday's drop in price. So we've got a lot of things to dive into in today's video. We're going to be going over a whole range of different discussion points. First off, taking a look at whether or not the relief rally is over, equity indices starting to collapse, the dollar, bonds, and commodities as leading indicators of that continued correction, and what you need to know about what you should be doing in this environment. So let's go ahead and first start off here with the crypto TA. Here we're gonna hop over to our tool coin panel here, one of our partners here on the channel where you guys will be able to track my TA setups here uh, for the next coming weeks and uh, months going forward. We'll adjust these over time because we get live updates if you guys subscribe to coin panel. But essentially, there were a few key things we talked about. This is our report back from August 8th. Things had not really changed since then and we will be putting out a new report for next Monday's episode. But I wanna emphasize again what we talked about here. We were testing whether or not we could get above $25,000. And if we could not turn that range into support, we'd be coming back down to $20,000. This would be further confirmed by whether or not if we held on the 200 EMA and 200 MA on the four hour time frame. And on top of that as well, while we had higher lows and higher highs, it again comes back to those moving averages. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at what happened here. We had our drawing here as we came out of the deviation since back here in uh, uh, mid-July, coming back in here, starting to have that pattern of higher lows, higher highs, building in an ascending wedge, which again, already gave us a pretty good hint here that this was a bearish pattern, that things were getting exhausted. Well, we got that, and unfortunately, instead of being able to break through $25,000 after multiple retests around this range, potentially turning it into new support, potential positive scenario to $30,000, we unfortunately started to roll over here. We broke through and we weren't able to clear through 25K. And as we came down here to test those moving averages, collapsing through, came all the way down to $21,000. Albeit we haven't made it to $20,000 just yet, we are definitely on course to test that level. It is much more likely than not with this kind of sell side momentum. And we'll talk about that a little bit more when we take a look at book map a little later on to see the market order flow. But this is not just in the case of Bitcoin. We've also got this going on in Ethereum. Now, as many of you will probably know, for Ethereum, we had talked about the fact that as we got up to around nineteen to uh, nineteen hundred dollars to two thousand dollars, this was one of our key talking points. Excuse me, around eighteen hundred to two thousand, we were planning to take some profits and go back to cash, mainly due to long-term fears that this is just a relief rally and that the macro environment will drag us back lower for some time. And we had also been bullish as well on Ethereum earlier on. We had a great trade setup here going in towards around $1,400, practically picking the lows here and taking profits in this upper band range here. But then again, as much as it can be exciting to see Ethereum turning higher, as much as people are excited about the merge, to be honest with you all, the macro environment is not looking exciting. And to be completely fair, this is what the Fed meeting minutes completely, completely certified here which is that the Fed is much more likely to continue extensive rate hikes. And we'll talk about why that is as we go throughout the video. But we can see it manifesting in price or the market did not like these Fed meeting minutes. They were hoping to get an early warning sign that the Fed was going to pivot, that it was going to start to ease monetary policy. But instead, the Fed meeting minutes talked about further validation on the move they made back in July of raising another 75 basis points. But on top of that as well, further continuing that increase pattern of 75 basis points, not slowing down those federal fund rate increases. Now, when we take a look here at the ES uh, S&P 500 futures here, although the market has not opened, it's gonna open in about 30 minutes, we are already down about 1.2% since the open, uh, you know, basically uh, this morning. And we can see the RSI here as we were emphasizing time and time again, as much as we rode the relief rally, as much as we made some great returns along the way, we had warned extensively about these Fed meeting minutes and the fact that equities were looking overbought. This was not the range to take excessive risk. And while I don't wanna say that we're gonna to go to the absolute lows across the board on all indices, I don't wanna make that call just yet. We gotta see how the next few days play out. 
The key point here is that we've been generally short-term bearish here as we got up into this channel where we usually see contestment. Plus, after a near 19% return off of the lows and a clear cross through on the RSI as of Mondays, excuse me, as of uh, the price move we saw back on Friday. So as we're breaking down below the 200 EMA here, this looks yet again like another deviation back down lower. And the NASDAQ is further confirmation of this. Now, if you guys want to know of a chart that is giving big warning signs that we are about to get into a nasty period of price action, yet again, take a look at the NASDAQ. Why is this chart so scary? Sure, certainly, it's rallied a good amount here. And yes, there's minor pullbacks along the way during this overall rally we've had. But why is it so scary now? Well, there's a few key things here. First off, as per usual, we came back in to the pocket of the 200-day and the 200-day EMA, right? And we've done that yet again here and have now fallen out of it. That has been a telltale sign each and every time that we've got further correction to go down, not overnight, but over the next coming days and weeks. But on top of that, we were able to clear through. This is something that the bulls had here as a sign of optimism. We were able to clear through the line of previous resistance with the two other significant highs of this bear market. Now, if the bulls were in charge, as price would come up here, we would expect that it could make support on that range of previous resistance, clear through the moving averages, and really stun everyone and continue charting hard. That's what the bulls needed to do. Unfortunately, we did not get that. In fact, we got the worst case scenario here for the bulls. We got a deviation. It would have been much better here if price simply didn't clear through these moving averages, had a minor pullback, and broke up higher. Because psychologically, this was the peak around euphoria in the market. This is where if there was going to be buyers on the sidelines, they should have been able to come through and buy on this previous range of resistance, but we didn't get that. We got a lot of market sell side pressure. We got a lot of fear going in to that Fed meeting minutes report back on Wednesday and the days following after. And this signals that the market, even equity markets, which are much more optimistic and don't accurately predict Fed market moves. In fact, they uh, anticipate the most optimistic scenario because it's where the most risk taking happens. They even fell short on their estimations and realized, oh my gosh, we were wrong. This relief rally was built off too much hopium. It's time to take profits from the short term. And what we got was a deviation here, a breakdown below that line of resistance. Because this is the point where maximum euphoria should come in and drive prices higher if the trend is going to continue. And we did not get that. We got the opposite. That is incredibly telling here. And it is likely going to signal if we cannot hold this range at 13,000, which has been historic support many times in the past, excuse me, 13,000 on the NASDAQ futures, we are likely going back down into no man's land, into a lot of the heavy correction territory we had back in June of this year. I wouldn't doubt it for a second. Don't doubt the reality. The Federal Reserve is hawkish. They are trying to cool and tame inflation, and it is not done yet. It is not done when you see ridiculous pump and dump uh, meme stock rallies like Bed Bath & Beyond trying to yet again pull another GameStop short squeeze. Well, if you guys want to know that the momentum is stalled here, that this is very short-lived, take a look at the chart here. Already down from around $30 to $11. This stuff to me is a disgrace. If people think for a moment that we are pulling another GameStop here and that the institutions aren't making a quick buck off retail investors, you got another thing coming to you. They are using you. They are using this desperation for euphoria and the same kind of returns we've seen in the past. And unfortunately, the people who are promoting this are leading people down the same trotten path that is going to lead them to losing even more money. What little money people have now after the market has collapsed since uh, back in November during the highs. Let's go ahead and take a look though, as we talked about, at some of the leading indicators here. While indices in the equity market are collapsing, there are some things that are charting higher and signaling that tougher times are coming ahead. Take a look at the dollar index here. Since back here in August 9th, well before the Fed meeting minutes, well before the upcoming September FOMC meeting, we can see that the Dixie has been basically chartering up each and every trading day here. The dollar is almost back to its relative highs that we haven't seen in the past few decades. A major milestone here for the dollar as it continues to chart higher. And it's likely going to be chartering even higher. 
In the Dash report, we have a key level we've been watching for. I highly recommend if you guys kind of like this content here on the channel that you guys check out the Dash report. You guys get even more in-depth content than what we talk about here on the channel. But we've been really focusing on the Dixie chartering much higher here in the long run going into the next coming months into early 2023. But it's not just the dollar index that is showcasing this. And I want to kind of explain before we dive into the other charts why the Dixie or the dollar index going up is terrible for equity markets. It means that the inflation problem, that is not just a U.S. problem, but a global problem, is getting worse. And that central banks across the world, including the ECB, the Bank of England, and other major central banks, even potentially the People's Bank of China and the Bank of Japan, are not doing enough to tame inflation. They are not doing enough to cool global demand. And until they do that, inflation will come roaring back up and it will be worse off than it was just back a couple months ago when we had the record print. It's going to be more and more painful the longer the Fed doesn't do the difficult decision of tightening interest rates and continuing to rise interest rates and tighten monetary policy when it comes to quantitative easing, shooting towards quantitative tightening. Let's take a look at the U.S. 30-year yield here. Since back here on August 2nd, the bond market, probably the most effective market predicting what the Fed is going to do, continuing to chart a higher here. We are at our highest range here since back in mid-July. The bond market knew well in advance here while equity markets were popping up. Bond yields teetered down a tad, but here they continue to chart a higher and hold most of their ground because they knew that the Fed was not going to be able to pull back on raising interest rates. And now the big reason here, this is the big two telling charts here that I think you need to watch because they are charts that the Fed is watching and they are charts that the broader investors are watching as well. Smart money. They're watching what's going on in commodity markets. Commodity markets are driving the inflation figure time and time again. And if fuel prices do not go down, we are not going to see inflation cool down. Now, while a lot of people have been watching crude oil, basically trying to track the price of gasoline in the economy and the price of gas for a variety of other use cases, Good news is here for the bulls, gas has remained relatively low. It's remaining around that $88 range per barrel. And it looks like it might even have a chance to roll a bit lower. But while gas is going out of here, or gasoline, more specifically crude oil, it is important to watch what's happening in the other most important commodity, natural gas. Now, if you all are in the loop on the situation and what's going on in Europe when it comes to uh, natural gas prices and the scarcity according to the amount of demand in the economy we have got a big mess on our hands when it comes to the UK and the EU there is going to be a massive shortage of energy this is something that has been talked about for a long period of time it's not me being a pessimist guys I'm a pragmatic optimist I know long term we're gonna get through this things will be good and uh, you know again we'll, we'll come out on top in the long run right things usually always work that way but I want to be very clear that we have to be ready for the short-term pain. and We cannot just say, oh, no, the Fed's just going to save us. You know, there, There's no macro things to be concerned about. The worst is beyond us. When in reality, natural gas just printed its highest rate, not only higher than where we were back here in May during what many people saw as peak inflation, but on top of that as well, the highest range we have seen since as far back as August of 2008. And over 12 years, the highest prices we've seen for natural gas, absolutely unheard of. What many people didn't think could happen here, especially after some of these stark declines in natural gas. And again, we were the first to point out, hey, a lot of these drops are starting to happen. This could always be a sign here if we break through this channel significantly. We could come down, you know, have inflation cool down for a while, and equity markets could have their relief rally. And that's sort of what we got but it needed to be sustained in order to become the new bull market that many people thought it was going to be. And we were not able to see that. In fact, we saw the inverse. We saw equity prices getting into overbought territory. Yet at the same time, commodities starting to tick back higher, the dollar index starting to churn higher, and on top of that, the bond market starting to price in continued increases in the federal funds rate. Equity markets were living in a fairy tale land. And in reality, Markets are not ready to sustain a bull market because of the rate of inflation. Now, <clears throat> I want to go ahead and take a look at one really critical thing here. 
We've talked a lot about crypto markets. We've talked about the current status of what's going on in Bitcoin's price and Ethereum and how we do think we are going to chart lower here. I, I wouldn't be surprised if in the short term maybe you get a rebound here on the four hour time frames for Bitcoin and Ethereum to potentially see if they can get back above there, but instead start to use those ranges as resistance. That is something to bear in mind that we could get a short term rebound here from this range. But I do not think you're coming back up into this range, guys. I don't think it's going to get any better than it was back over the last few weeks until a much longer period of time and much more correction to the downside. What we need to take a look at, though, in order to get an understanding of this, is take a look at bookmap here. Now, when we try to understand what's going on in the markets, we need to take a look at the heat map. We need to take a look here at the market order flow and try to figure out what price in the market is telling us here. Because unless we understand what the order book what market order flow is telling us about who's more in demand to buy or sell, we are not going to be able to know where price is likely going. Now, in regards to bookmap, let's take a look here at the past couple days. What we've got here on the chart is back towards August 19th. So we've got the last, you know, kind of couple trading days here. And what is price and the heat map telling us? Well, we can see here that as price has been raging since the really significant correction back a couple days ago where market order flow was really negative, since then, while we've been consolidating sideways, the market is telling us a lot of interesting things here. Market order flow, albeit positive, is relatively neutral here. We're not seeing any significant trend of a lot of buyers coming in, market buying the dip. So that's one sign of weakness for the bulls here. But on top of that as well, what we are seeing is that any time when we get a big amount of increase in the cumulative volume delta or market order flow, people just buying at the best available price on the order book, we can see that the resistance caused by the order book, by people having asks waiting to get filled, while some are getting filled, some of the higher time frame levels around 22,000, which would need to be cleared in order for us to really start shooting higher. You can see as we expand the uh, price range here, that there isn't much resistance here on the order book. Until we can clear those levels, we cannot significantly move higher here. And that is a key telltale sign here that there's a lot of, albeit maybe buyers coming in this range, it is not enough to really flip market order flow to being significantly positive, and there's still order book resistance. Until that gets cleared, we cannot move higher here. Now, if you guys want to track this kind of metrics in order to get that additional insight, again, I recommend you guys check out Bookmap down below in the description. You can get 20% off on your first month, but it's one of my favorite tools outside of TradingView and CoinPanel and some of the tools we use here on the channel to get insights on the market. It is simply just letting us know what's happening here. There is continued sell side pressure here. We're still getting these dips coming down here. And while there are some buyers maybe still coming in, some slight support on the order book, we can see that if we zoom out, there's nowhere near the kind of buy side support here at this range than there is on the sell side right now, at least some of these big figures here. The order book is quite light down here for the bids on the order book. They have set in their fill orders. They've been filling in for the last couple of months. We've got a lot of those interested buyers filling in their orders from around the $17,000 to $20,000 range. Sometimes you eventually run out of buy side liquidity until prices move lower. And I think that is unfortunately what we're going to see here. Many people don't want to see this, but it is the reality at the end of the day that we are in a very scary macro environment and that could continue to weigh crypto assets down. This is something we've never seen, guys. I don't want to be uh, the generic guy saying, oh, we're in a, a bearish macro environment, inflation, this and that, but crypto has never lived through this before. I think we need to be a bit humble. We need to expect that things are going to get nasty before they get good again. And as much as I love being here talking to you guys about crypto markets, I'll be here through good and bad times. I'll be here through confusing times in the market, trying to break down what I can to hopefully help you guys out as much as possible, even though I won't always get it right. I want to make it very clear that everything I talk about here is as good intention as possible. And I want you guys to be protected as much as possible. Now, if you've got positions that are in for the next 5, 10 years, best to probably not touch anything. But if you're a swing trader like me, if you're trying to trade those market cycles, I would say I'd be wanting to go to cash, protect myself, and wait for a much more fearful time in the market. The late stage fear where people start to short the market, they start betting against themselves and start trying uh, to bet that things are going to go practically to zero. That's what I'm going to be buying in. Not at zero, but you get what I mean. When the market sentiment is much more negative rather than the optimistic nature that it's currently in right now.
So that's it for today's video, guys. I hope you all enjoyed this one. If you like it, please drop a like. It's one of the best ways you can support the channel. And if you like any of the tools that we use here on the channel for this Macro Money Special, check out the links down below in the description. There's tons of discount codes. You can get 20% off if you sign up for the Dash Report on an annualized basis, as well as 20% off Bookmap. And you can also get a nice solid discount code around 20-25% for Coin Panel. But all being said, guys, have a wonderful start to your week. Hang in there. Play it smart. Try to protect yourself during this environment. And I'll see you all in the next video on Wednesday. Take care, everyone.